untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a mono black aggro deck featuring Shadow of Mortality, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, a whopping 15 mana for a 7 7 avatar, but it costs X less to cast, where X is the difference between our current life total and our starting life total. So if we're at 7 or less life, then now we can play Shadow for just double black, and a 2 mana 7 7 is quite the bargain, even if we need to jump through a few hoops to get there. And then another great payoff for having a low life total is Scourge of the Skyclaves, a 2-mana demon whose power and toughness are each equal to 20 minus the highest life total among players. So don't want to play this if any player is at 20 or more life, otherwise it's going to die the instant we play it. But as soon as life totals start dwindling, Scourge can quickly grow in size. And we have a ton of ways in our deck to lower our own life total, so even against the more controlling decks, we can usually still play it and keep it growing. So let's take a look at the rest of our deck. We are an aggro deck, as I mentioned, so we do want to get off to a quick start, which is why we have the full set of Cutthroat Contender, a 1-1 one -one that can pay 1 life at any point to give it plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn, can only activate it once each turn. So this can attack for 2 damage each turn, which is pretty nice, and then more importantly, it's also a way to lower our own life total, and we can even activate this the turn we play it, even though it might have summoning sickness just to lose 1 life. We can also activate this in the opponent's turn, so we can essentially lose 2 life per turn cycle if we'd like, just to start lowering our life total to make it easier to play Shadow and Scourge, which is especially important against the more controlling matchups where the opponent's not going to cooperate and attack our life total. Then we also have the full set of Duress, important to take away key removal spells that might otherwise be able to remove Shadow or Scourge after putting all the effort into playing them. And then we also have the full set of Forsworn Paladin, a 1-1 with Menace, so it can get some sneaky attacks in, important for growing our Scourge of the Skyclaves if the opponent is still at 20. And then we can also later use it to pay 2 mana, tap it, pay 1 life, and create a treasure token, so another way to maybe lower our own life total, and also gives us a nice mana sink in the late game once we're empty-handed and just have a bunch of mana left over, can pay 3 mana to give a creature plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn, can also maybe gain death touch if a treasure was used. Then at 2 mana, besides sometimes being able to play a Scourge on turn 2 already, especially thanks to an early Cutthroat, we also have the full set of Tenacious Underdog, a 3-2 that can also be blitzed out of the graveyard for 4 mana, paying 2 life, so it can be a nice source of card advantage in the late game in the more controlling matchups, and of course also lowers our own life total. And then Blade of the Oni, a 3-1 with Menace, that can also get some nice attacks in early to lower the opponent's life total to set up our Scourge, and then we can also reconfigure it for 4 mana, equipping it to one of our creatures, turning it into a 5-5 Demon with Menace, although that doesn't come up as much as you would think. And then at 3 mana, 2 copies of Hand of Vecna, a legendary equipment that's pretty unique as we can equip it, paying 1 life for each card in our hand as opposed to paying the 2 mana equip cost. And then at the beginning of combat on our turn, the equipped creature gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of cards in our hand. So it can pump up one of our creatures early on, which is nice, but more importantly it's a great way to quickly lower our own life total, as we can maybe equip it several times in the same turn if we have a few different creatures in play, and that's a great way to play an early Shadow of mortality, which can then quickly apply a lot of pressure. And then rounding out our deck, we've got some spot removal with the full set of Blood Chief's Thirst, and four copies of Infernal Grasp as a two mana instant, that costs two life to use, so that's another way to lower our life total. And then our mana base includes four copies of Agadim's Awakening, which we can play as an untapped land at the cost of three life, so another great way to enable an early Shadow or Scourge, and can also be cast as a sorcery later in the game to maybe get some creatures back from our graveyard. And then we've got the Abandoned Mire, 13 Swamps, which is fitting in this deck, and then four copies of Hive of the Eye Tyrant, another great mana sink. So between turning Hive into a creature, Blitzing Underdog, maybe activating Paladin, or maybe reconfiguring Blade of the Oni, we've got a ton of mana sinks in the late game. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Couple underdogs. Thirst as removal. And then once we start blitzing these, it'll be easier to play Shadow. Opponent on a white aggro deck. Still playing underdog. But next turn we might have to take out some creatures. Opponent's red whites. Turn to aspirants. Okay, so we can thirst to take out aspirants. Attack for three. 
and add another underdog to the board to keep up the pressure. Another option is to keep up Infernal Grasp, since we're likely going to see more creatures we want to kill. And then if we picked up a land, we could start Blitzing, as we see a Brutal Cathar here. But now we can take out Brutal Cathar in our turn just as well. Could also take a look with Duress, which I don't really mind. See what we're working with, as opposed to playing Paladin and casting Infernal Grasp. Yeah. Let's have a look, maybe take away Wandering Emperor or some other burn spell, opponent on the red-white kind of burn deck that we're used to now. Might want to take Play With Fire, which is a cheaper removal spell for my creatures here, as opposed to the clunkier Royal Eruption, even though it deals more damage. And then I can attack, offer the trade, opponent probably takes it, and then next turn we can Infernal Grasp the Cavalier. Or we can kill the Cathar and then ambush the Cavalier with Underdog we get back, which is maybe better. And it's not going to switch to Knight since we've already cast a 1-drop. Now the only drawback here is that they might be able to trade onto the Initiates. But I think that's worthwhile here. Just so we can ambush the Cavalier. And then trade off our resources. We have Underdog that can be blitzed, but our opponents cannot do the same. So let's get blitzing. Opponents at 8. And at some point we'll be able to play a cheap 7-7. Seven, seven. Kumano deals 1. And opponent going face. Perfect. So two mana shadow coming up. And then we can add some other one drops to the board. And there's probably no need to pay life in the opponent's turn since we already got our shadow out. Okay, adversary can get back a burn spell, so that's sort of scary. Can put us to three. But they don't really have any amazing attacks. So we're at three. Opponent may be hoping to chum block and then top deck another burn spell. Nope, opponent is attacking. Well, in that case, I can eat the adversary, chump initiates, and then they should be dead on the way back. Can animate our hive as well if we'd like, or activate our paladin. Awesome, so managed to beat the red-white burn deck, one of the more popular decks in best of one standard. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Can check things out with Duress, turn to Underdog, Hand of Vecna to equip. So if we have a Shadow or Scourge coming up, this will grow quite quickly. All right, let's see what we're up against. Looks like Black-White Angels. And yeah, that hand is problematic. Vanishing Verse, great answer to Underdog. Probably what I have to take, and then at least Thirst deals with Retribution nicely. And Doomscar is going to require at least 5 mana total to set up. And then we can still Blitz or Underdog. Okay, could go for Blade. What makes more sense here? Opponent's going to Fertile Doomscar next turn. May still be better off going Underdog. And then turn three, maybe Hand of Vecna. As not to overextend. And then if we draw a land, we can Blitz Underdog. If not, Blade plus Contender seems fine. 
Use our life total as a resource to equip Hand of Vecna. Opponent foretelling presumably another Doomscar. Okay, so in that case we'll start by attacking. Opponent falls to 7. So there is an argument for not playing my land out here, so if we have to use removal next turn, then we make sure our underdog still hits for 7, as opposed to potentially going down to 6 power. But if they Doomscar, then I will need that land in play to Blitz regardless. So maybe it's fine to run it out here, since we eventually might want to attack with Hive. Opponent goes for Retribution. So now we're only going to be able to hit them for 6 here, as we'll be forced to clear a path. So, yeah, playing the land out last turn, maybe coming back to bite us a little bit. Youthful Valkyrie, we can kill on a turn. And then probably need an untap plan to guarantee a win here in case they top decked a Vanishing Verse in the meantime. Alright, so we'll just attack then. See if they have a Vanishing Verse. They do, unfortunately. So in that case, play Tapped Hive play Contender as another lethal threat, or we can go for Blade with built-in Menace. Probably no need to play Contender overextend into another Doomscar that we know about. So I'll equip onto Blade and pass. There's Doomscar, so now we just activate Hive and attack for the win. GG's. All right, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Turn one contender, perfect for setting up turn two scourge. And then I think we want to wait and see what the opponent is up to before activating cutthroat without any benefit, because we do have an Agadim's Awakening in hand as well, which can lower for three. So I'm not too desperate for activating cutthroat here. So yeah, if they're on some sort of red black Omnixilus or Oni Cult Anvil deck, it's probably safe to keep our life total high, as the opponent's gonna help us in lowering it. So now we can play a Scourge if we'd like. Currently a 1-1, but in the opponent's turn we can grow it up to a 2-2. Infernal Grasp gonna take care of it, at least lowers the opponent's life total for the next Scourge. Opponent's gonna throw an Underdog. So do we want to pay here? I think we'll wait. Opponent's deck could be quite aggressive as well. Start by attacking. And then we can hit them with duress and then decide how to proceed. Ooh, okay, Invoke Despair is a problem, but so is Obnixilus. Although if Obnixilus makes us lose life, that also sort of plays into our game plan. Invoke Despair, gonna make me lose 4. Sack a creature. Could get rid of Contender pretty easily. Obnixilus would come into play with quite a bit of loyalty if they sack Underdog. And then the Devil deals with the Contender as well. Yeah, close call. I think we take Obnixilus. And then we can play a Scourge, probably taking three, so it's a little larger. And then we'll have to see how we want to manage our Shadow and our life total. Taking Obnixilus also plays better with uh, various creature lands, which they could otherwise activate as soon as they get to five mana. 
Raven Feebleman kills Contender. Sure, I don't think we activate in response. Otherwise I would just Blitz Underdog next turn, so that still lowers our life total. Although the problem with Blitzing Underdog is that then Invoke Despair hits Scourge. So I guess now we can just double Underdog, which works out better. Otherwise I might have had to just play one out normally. Alright, so a nice top deck here. And then I'll happily lose for life to an Invoke Despair. We'll just grow the Scourge. So then they could be dead to removal on Underdog. Right now we're sacking Underdog, opponent's jumping Scourge. Taking at least three and we could Blitz or maybe set up our Shadow. Ooh, Meat Hook Massacre for two. All right, that's unexpected. That deals with double underdog, although contender off the top. So can blitz underdog, but if we want to play around invoke despair, we're probably better off playing contender. And then I'll activate now to grow scourge. Pass it back. And our opponent concedes, yeah, invoke despair doesn't do it, so we've got them covered from all angles. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is promising. Double Shadow might be a little difficult to get out, but we have a Contender, which is the best way of lowering our own life total. So I'm happy enough activating this in my turn. And then, that's one of the few ways we can play turn 2 Scourge. Hmm, opponent with a play with fire. That's annoying. I think, in that case, we might want to just let that happen. If we're up against a burn deck. So no turn to Scourge. We'll have a look with Duress. And yeah, sure looks like a burn deck. In this case, probably take the Royal Eruption. Grasp will deal with Aspirants. Can play another contender if we'd like. Sure, and then this time I'm not gonna pay the one. We'll let them attack us if they want, which will help with Shadow. But against a burn deck, probably won't avoid taking free damage. So take three. And opponent lets us untap. I'll just attack for... Hmm. Can one attack for two? Just to help grow Scourge, but then they might play with fire in response. So maybe I should be content with one, but then of course they can just kill Scourge as well. So, yeah, let's just steal one. And then I'm just going to pass with Infernal Grasp available. Opponent burns our face. Okay. Shadow likes to see that. Opponent maybe looking to scry into a creature to get that extra plus one counter. Another Aspirant. So we probably want to kill the original one right now, even though we could take a hit to play cheaper Shadow. Aspirin could maybe quickly outpace it in terms of size. So this is a close call. I think we do just kill the uh, attacking Aspirants, although maybe we can wait to see where they put the counters. Yeah, I guess we can let the triggers happen. One's gonna go one each. So I don't have a great attack anymore. Unless we want to kill the blocking Aspirant, take four to help with Shadow. Which is actually not unreasonable. So 
still be able to play a 2 mana shadow now. So an untapped land would be great. Contender gets to attack. Didn't think we pay the one. And then we'll need to get a hidden before we can play Scourge and have it stick around. Because right now just a 2-2. Two -two. So it's a bit of a balancing act here against a burn deck. But outside of Brutal Cathar and maybe a Valor Stance, they don't have a ton of removal for 7-7. Seven -seven. Aspirant attacks, that's going to force a trade for Play With Fire, essentially. Since we cannot afford to take it. But we've got backup Shadows. Also gets exiled for what it's worth. Because of the etching. Okay. And another Kumano. We'll have to watch out for Den of the Bugbear as well, so... Yeah, every life point matters here. Land is good. So let's attack. Opponent probably takes it. And then we'll have to decide if we want to take one more damage in order to play a slightly larger Scourge. And that may be worth it, so we'll go to 5. Next turn, let's say they animate Den. We'll have two significant blockers, and this being a 4-4. Makes a big difference, too. Play Shadow, play Scourge. And, uh, yeah. Now it's time to apply pressure. And hope they don't find removal for our threats. Brutal Cathar is exactly what we did not want to see. So now we'll need to draw another answer to it. Another Scourge, I guess, helps. So Scourge can attack, and then if they double block, I guess we kill Brutal Cathar, that's fine. If not, it'll grow both Scourges. So, both 8-8s now. Now, interesting to note, if we reconfigure Blades onto Scourge, it will turn into a 5-5, so it doesn't uh, keep that power toughness equal to 20 minus highest life totals. Opponent forced to stay back, Cathar transforms, and we could animate Hive. So what happens if I were to animate Hive attack with everyone? Then they can jump both Scourges... Eat my cutthroat, take six. That's not ideal. Because then we would potentially die on the way back. So I think we just attack with double scourge. And then keep hive, blade, and contender back on defense. And then we'll wait and see if we want to reconfigure blade or keep up hive. Jumps once, falls to four. So now if I were to reconfigure Blade onto Contender, I have a 5-5 five five back. But then if they draw a land for Den, we would still be dead. So I think we need to keep Hive as an extra blocker here. Thundering Raiju, okay, that can deal two direct damage. So we need every single blocker here to stay alive. And then we should have them on the way back. So block, block, and jump. And yes, Scourge of the Skyclave's gonna finish out this game. Awesome. Well, another close game against Red-White, but yeah, those huge scourges and shadows in the end able to finish out the game. On to the next one.
All right, we're on the draw, and yeah, I'm all for this hand. Triple Cutthroat. How quickly can we play Shadow of Mortality? Ooh, even a Scourge of the Skyclaves, which we can play turn two. So I'm just gonna lose one life here, since this is gonna be a speedrun of lowering our own life total to an extent. Ranger class makes a wolf, that's fine. And we'll attack, see if they want to trade. They don't. So in that case, we could play Scourge. I guess it's only a 1-1 one -one because of the life gain from Blossoming Sand. Although, yeah, double contender is still somewhat tempting before we play Scourge. And then how much life do we want to pay? Probably twice. And we can choose again in the opponent's turn what to do. Companion, pretty good blocker in the face of Contender. So looks like a green-white enchantment deck, which could easily have answers to Shadow. So it's not necessarily gonna win us the game. I think I'm still fine losing some life here. Another Scourge is excellent. So attack with the team. And then these two can pump. And then probably fine staying at 10. Play a Scourge. 5-5 five, five at the moment. And yeah, there's a borrowed time as expected. But next turn we can double spell or two threats and that's how we kind of get ahead. Might have been able to save myself one activation there. So let's attack. Bone and trades. And we're not gonna mess around. Scourge plus Shadow. So yeah, I should have definitely saved myself one activation last turn, stayed at seven. And yeah, opponent concedes, facing a pair of seven sevens. Not too bad. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. Double Cutthroats can quickly enable Shadow. In fact, I may want to pay one life right now to speed it up. Although I might change my decision once we see what our opponent is playing, if they're on a very aggressive deck. Turn one initiates. Alright, I guess I'll maybe want to hit the brakes here. But we can still pump in the attack phase here. That'll deal too. Opponent goes for the trade, actually. And I'll play an underdog. So next turn I could lose four life between Awakening and Contender, so we're getting close to a very cheap shadow. Hand of Vecna also helps. So I can either equip Hand of Vecna and attack for what would be 6, or we can add a Contender to the board. Kind of like Hand of Vecna here for the more explosive Shadow potential. And then we've got removal, so we can maybe deal with a, a lifelink creature or some big threat that could fly over. If our opponent plays Elite Spellbinder, that also interacts in an interesting way with Shadow. It's gonna be a Royal Eruption to the face, okay. Well, that's uh, making it very clear what the opponent's plans are. Step one attack with Underdog before emptying my hands. Play a two-mana Shadow and a Contender, 
and then hope that they cannot burn us out here. Opponent gains one up to eight, but we've got the Infernal Grasp to clear a path. So I guess Brutal Cathar gonna temporarily get rid of my shadow. Could have traded for Initiate if they decided to attack another shadow of the top. Okay, so if I attack with Underdog, that goes up to six. Contender can attack as well. And our opponent's gonna be forced to block at least one of them. And then we should have things covered on the way back. I imagine they'll just block with Initiate here. It's gonna jump. In that case, I don't think I pump with Contender. And then what's safer here? Probably another Shadow, given that we've seen Royal Eruption as opposed to Grasp. Now if our opponent has another Brutal Cathar and a Royal Eruption, plus a land, I guess we could be dead, but... We'll have to wait and see. So land 5. They might have that uh, Invoke Justice, putting four counters on Brutal Cathar. Nope, just to play with fire. Going upstairs, so if they also have a Royal Eruption, we're dead. Kumano puts us to two. Okay, keeps the suspense. So another Brutal Cathar would be lethal. Doesn't appear to be the case. So we get to untap. Now I cannot Infernal Grasp, otherwise we're dead. This would grow up to six, so if I just attack with a team and there's no interaction, we should get there. Opponent chumps, take seven. Awesome, so very close here against Naya Burn. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Our hand isn't ideal as we're missing one of our life loss payoff cards. Double Awakening, so we are losing a lot of life, but not really for any benefit. So I'll take a mulligan. This is a little bit better. Bottom a Paladin. And then... We could already play turn two Scourge, although against a red deck I might want to wait until... It's a little bit larger, so it cannot get killed by burn spells. Put on some blue reds, maybe an artifact synergy deck. So I'm less worried about removal, although Voltage Surge at 4 damage could still be a card they have. So we'll hit for 1, thanks to Menace. And I'm tempted to just play Blade of the Oni here. Hang on to Infernal Grasp for later, once they maybe spent mana equipping their creature. Happily take two. And a Fable of the Mirror Breaker to play. Alright, so now we can hit for four. And then maybe take three, play a large Scourge. And now it's out of range from a potential Voltage Surge. So we're getting on the board quickly. Can still use Paladin or maybe Hive as a mana sink. And we can reconfigure Blade, so no shortage of ways to use our mana. Despite almost being empty-handed. Put on discards a Rabbit Battery. And our opponent attacks. So that does lead me to believe that they have a Voltage Surge in hand to maybe try and take out Scourge. So maybe I shouldn't block here. If I do block it would probably be the Goblin, so they cannot kill my Scourge for free using first strike damage. We're both at 15, so Scourge is not getting any bigger from the opponent damaging me. Otherwise we could like let first strike damage happen and then maybe grow a Scourge in the process. So yeah, I'll just take four. Alright, opponent with an Iron Hoof Boar. 
on the blades. That's gonna hit for eight now. And another one. Uh oh. Well, I guess we're dead. That was unexpected, to say the least. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and what about this hand? No one drop, unfortunately, but a nice selection of two drops. And we should be able to enable Scourge and Shadow at some point. So probably gonna have to take three here, as opposed to playing it tapped on turn one. Opponent to red white. Okay, another awakening. So against red white, I guess we'll still play a blade here over underdog. In case our opponent presents a blocker, we want to attack past Jada, red white angels. Not a combination you usually see. All right, so we'll hit for three, and then don't think I want infernal grasp quite yet, even though Jada's pretty scary. So we can go for Scourge, and then do we take three or not? Against a bunch of flyers, I'm afraid I'm gonna get outraced. So I think I should just play this tapped. And Infernal Grass will lose two, so that still grows Scourge at the very least, and we'll see if Jana keeps attacking, or if her opponent tries and play rounds. Scourge and Shadow, they do not. Do we see a 4-mana Angel, perhaps? A Legion Angel comes to mind. It's gonna be a Skyclave instead. Goodbye, Scourge. Nope, opponent goes for a Blade instead. Alright, so we can double spell nicely. And, uh, yeah, I guess we can attack first... Don't think they'll be double blocking. Second Infernal Grasp, although that would not grow the Scourge further, so... Probably no points. So I could just go Scourge Underdog and hang on to Infernal Grasp as a pseudo combo trick. So potentially 5 mana for Angels available. If our opponent's playing with cards like Invoke Justice, it's also a reason not to kill their creature right away, so there's nothing for them to get back. Janna hits us for 2. Scourge up to a 6-6 six, six now. Even if a board wipe were to happen, we still have Underdog, we would get back a 2-2 two, two Illusion. So we can recover from a Sweeper. And if they play a large creature, Infernal Grasp has that covered. So we're in okay shape here, but uh, opponent still has a lot of cards in hand. It's gonna be a Brutal Cathar, exiling one Scourge. And a Youthful Valkyrie at long last, an Angel. Okay, Bloodchief's Thirst can deal with Valkyrie. And then... Do I want to attack with uh, Underdog, trade for Cathar? Probably. And I can hang on to Infernal Grasp during the opponent's turn. Maybe set up an ambush by killing Cathar or Apparition. Still at 13 life, so this is where an Invoke Justice could take place. Skyclave Apparition instead. Goes to exile my second Scourge, so that one's gone forever. And a Luminarch. Okay, so we'll see if the Brutal Cathar or Apparition attack. We hope they do. To set up a nice ambush. So grasp Brutal Cathar. Block Apparition. And Scourge. Scores up to a 12-12 here, can play our Shadow, and attack with Scourge and Underdog. So I guess now an Invoke Justice could still kill us. They jump with Apparition, counter from Aspirant on Jada, plus four more. 
but I don't think they're necessarily playing it. Alright, so Poen falls to two. Well, let's see if Justice gets invoked. In which case, I might have been better off killing Jada last turn. Just another Aspirant, that's fine. So Jada would go up to five. Not lethal. Unless there's a burn spell left over here. And we should have enough on the way back. Scourge is 17-17, doesn't get much larger, and our opponent throws in the towel. Awesome. So close game here against the red-white, good stuff. So yeah, we got to see our mono-black shadow deck in action. And yeah, the deck's pretty tricky to play at times. It's difficult to decide when it's appropriate to lose life aggressively and when you should hold back and let the opponent lower your own life total, especially against those burn decks, which can be quite scary to play against. But on the other hand, if opponents are unfamiliar with Shadow and Scourge, they might actually play into your game plan and help you enable them so you can get them out sooner and eventually take over. So a very rewarding deck if you put the time in to learn it, and of course can also be adjusted. There's a ton of sweet options in Mono Black, so you can always switch around some cards, maybe play more into the life loss theme, adding the Book of Vile Darkness as an Another payoff, maybe the Poet, which can pay two life to gain flying as a good enabler, and then maybe if you also add Eye of Vecna, you can enable Vecna himself. But the problem with going in a more controlling direction is that it's going to be more difficult to enable Scourge of the Skyclaves, which also relies on you dealing damage to the opponent to lower their life total, so there's always a bit of a balancing act. But yeah, for now I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.